Good morning, family. Welcome back. Welcome this morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I pray everyone had wonderful uh, night's sleep last night. Today is Monday. It's the beginning of our week. So I'm excited to see what this week is going to bring. The weather here is, as you can see, very dreary and rainy today. The sun's not out. Everything is wet. But that won't stop the show today. All right. So thank you for coming back for Genesis chapter 32. We're up to today. And today we're reading about um, Jacob's fear of fear of his twin brother Esau. So um, just a quick recap. We know that. Good morning. How are you? We know that Jacob um, and his mother, Rebecca, deceived the father and he got the blessing and the birthright um that typically would go to Esau and Jacob left the land he left the territory his homeland and he went to go live with his uncle Laban he has now married his two cousins Jacob and I mean Leah <laughs> he's married Leah and Rachel now when we read on Friday he wants to go back to his home territory and he is now afraid of what his brother Esau might do. If you remember, his mother told him to leave because Esau said that, um, you know, he had wanted to kill his brother. So anyway, we're gonna see Jacob on his way to go back home today. He's very successful. He's very, he's a very wealthy man, as you will see in this chapter. And again, this is very relatable to the way that he's handling this, in my opinion. We see a lot of it. All right. So good morning, everyone. Good morning, family. Good morning, Carrie. Good morning, Kimberly. Good morning, everyone else. Those are the only two that I see right now. So good morning, but good morning, family. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening for those of you that are watching the replay at a later date and time. All right. So we're going to pray this morning. We're going to pray. Today is Monday. It's the beginning of a new week. We're still pretty much in the beginning of a new month and early enough in the new year that we will continue to pray over the, the new year, the new month, and today, the new week. All right, and then we're going to get into the reading of the word. I have a couple of notes down here, just not too many. And I think we only have about three footnotes to get through this morning. All right, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you so much for assembling us this morning, Lord. I thank you for keeping us and sparing our lives throughout the course of the weekend. Father, we thank you that it is well with us. It is well with our souls. It is well with our children, grandchildren, everything concerning us and everything attached to us. Father, we thank you for bringing us into the new year, into 2024. Lord, we thank you for the new month and we thank you for the new week. Father, we pray over our day today. We pray and we command our morning and we command this week to release good news. We command all things to work together for our good, according to Romans 8 and 28, Lord God. Father, we thank you that no good thing will you withhold from us. Father, this week and this day, we pray that the works of our hands will be blessed. Let everything we put forth our time, energy, and effort to do, let it be successful, let it be prosperous, let it go easily and smoothly, Lord God. Father, we pray that you will release the angels of the Lord to go before us, Father. Your angels who excel in strength, continue to give your angels charge over us. Father, send your angels out before us to lead us and guide us. Keep your angels encamped around about us, Father, around our cars, around our homes, around our places of business. Father, let us dwell in peace and safety everywhere we go. Keep us from all accidents, seen and unseen. Keep us from all forms of hurt, harm, and destruction. Father, keep calamity and chaos far away from us, Lord. I pray that we will always be in the right place at the right time. So Holy Spirit, I pray that you will order our steps, thoughts, actions, words, and deeds. Let everything that we say, do, think, and become be pleasing in your sight and according to your perfect and holy will, Lord God. Father, we just ask that you lead the way for us. Continue to speak to us, to lead us, guide us, and mentor us, Father. So I ask that you will open up our ears this morning fine tune our hearing open up our hearts to be receptive lord as you speak to us father let us hear with clarity accuracy and precision and let us follow the instructions that you have given us timely let us not go out prematurely let us not lag behind you oh god 
but Father, let us operate in divine timing. Father, we lift up our bloodlines before you this morning, maternal and paternal, and I ask that you will have your way in every member of our families, Father, all of our loved ones, all of our friends, Father, I pray that you will touch them today, Father, cause a divine turnaround to take place in our lives, God, course correct us anywhere we need it, Father, anything that's out of alignment in our businesses, in anything that we're doing in our health, Father, Father, bring it back into divine alignment. So, Father, I ask that you bless us from the top of our head to the soles of our feet. Increase the anointing upon our lives. Increase our eyesight and our insight in the natural and in the spirit realm. Father, I pray that you will touch and anoint our bodies. Let our organs function at 100% capacity, oh God. Father, we thank you and we ask that you will bless the children, Lord. Continue to keep a hedge of protection around them. Father, we pray for safety in the lands in which we live. We pray lord for this nation that this nation will not be struck by any um, attacks to the power grid the food sources blackouts anything like that lord god so father i ask that you keep a hedge of protection around us and around this nation that cannot be broken penetrated nor compromised we cancel every plan of the enemy against our lives and against this nation father let us dwell once again in safety let there be peace in our homes peace in our hearts joy in our homes and joy in our hearts lord we thank you once again for this day we ask that you will bless the reading of your word father cause us to have divine insight revelation and wisdom into the word of god help us to always apply the word of your a word of god to our lives father and let us continue to find joy and pleasure in seeking your face and reading your word in the name of jesus we pray amen and amen all right family we got to continue to pray for this nation and the things that are going on in this country i just watched this video not that i was looking for it but as i was trying to set up um get everything set up i just quickly saw this video and it's just disturbing um some of the things that are going on and, and especially like in new york and stuff um so we have to really pray for for safety and pray for wisdom that god will order our steps all right and you know what? Let me just tell you something. I just had in my spirit, I wanted to pray something that we had normally been praying for Thankful Thursday. And I have it up in front of me. And I did not, I did not pray one word on here. I just started going and forgot to, um, that I really wanted to read that. All right, here we go. Genesis chapter 32, Amplified Bible. Jacob's fear of Esau. Now this is Esau is his twin brother. All right, here we go. The family drama continues. Then as Jacob went on his way, the angels of God met him to reassure and protect him. When Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's camp. So he named that place Mahanaim, double camps. Then Jacob sent messengers ahead of him to his brother Esau in the land of Seir, the country of Edom. He commanded them saying, this is what to say to my Lord Esau, lowercase l. Your servant, your, listen, your servant Jacob says this, I have been living temporarily with Laban and have stayed there until now. I have oxen, donkeys, flocks, male servants, and female servants. And I have sent this message to tell my Lord so that I may find grace and kindness in your sight. The messengers returned to Jacob saying, we went to your brother Esau and now he is coming to meet you. And there are 400 men with him. Hence, Jacob's fear. Jacob was greatly afraid and distressed and he divided the people who were with him and the flocks and herds and camels into two camps. And he said, if Esau comes to the one camp and attacks it, then the other camp, which is left, will escape. Clever, I must say, clever. Um, okay, here we go. Verse nine. Jacob said, O God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who said to me, return to your country and to your people and I will make you prosper. I am unworthy of all the loving kindness and compassion and of all the faithfulness which you have shown to your servant. With only my staff long ago, I crossed over this Jordan and now I have become blessed and increased into these two groups of people. 
save me please from the hand of my brother from the hand of Esau for I fear him that he will come back he will come attack me and the mothers with their children and you Lord said I will certainly make you prosper and make your descendants as numerous as the sand of the sea which is too great to be counted so Jacob spent the night there then he selected a present for his brother Esau from the livestock he had acquired. 200 female goats, 20 male goats, 200 ewes, 20 rams, 30 milking cows with their colts, 40 cows, 10 bulls, 20 female donkeys, and 10 donkey colts. He put them into the care of his servants, every herd by itself, and said to his servants, go on ahead of me and put an interval of space between the individual herds. Then he commanded the one in front saying, when Esau my brother meets you and asks to whom you belong and where you are going and whose animals in front, whose, whose are the animals in front of you? Then you shall say, they are your servant Jacob's. They are a gift sent to my Lord. I'm sorry, they are a gift yeah, sent to my Lord Esau, lowercase l. And he also is behind us. And so Jacob commanded the second and third as well. And all that followed the herd saying, this is what you shall say to Esau when you meet him. And you shall say, look, your servant. I love the way he continues to con refer to himself as his servant, right? After he got the birthright. And you shall say, look, your servant Jacob is behind us. For he said to himself, I will try to appease him with the gift that is going ahead of me. This is just right in his character, right? Then afterward, I will see him. Perhaps he will accept and forgive me. So the gift of the herds of, live, of livestock went on ahead of him, and he himself spent the night back in the camp. But he got up that same night and took his two wives his two female servants and his 11 children and waited over the ford of the Jabbok. Then he took them and sent them across the brook and he also sent across whatever he had. Here comes a story that most of us know. Every, um, everyone on here knows this story. Jacob wrestles. So Jacob was left alone and a man, capital M, came and wrestled with him until daybreak. When the man, capital M, saw that he um, had not prevailed against Jacob, capital, it's capital H is here, he touched his hip joint and Jacob's hip was dislocated as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you declare a blessing on me. So we asked him, what is your name? And Jacob said, and he said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men and have prevailed. Then Jacob asked him, please tell me your name. But he said, why is it that you ask my name? And he declared a blessing of the covenant promises on Jacob there. So Jacob named the place Peniel, the face of God, saying, For I have seen God face to face, yet my life has not been snatched away. Now the sun rose on him, and he passed Penuel, or Peniel. It has both here, P-E-N-U-E-L and P-E-N-I-E-L. And he was limping because of his hip. Therefore, to this day, the Israelites do not eat the tendon of the hip, which is on the socket of the thigh, because he touched Jacob, I'm sorry, because he touched the socket of Jacob's thigh by the tendon of the hip. Amen and amen. All right, let's go through the couple of footnotes here. The first footnote is for um, verse number two, and it reads, When Jacob saw them, let's go back, let's just back up to one for context. Then as Jacob went on his way, the angels of God met him to reassure and protect him. Here's verse two. When Jacob saw them, he said, this is God's camp. So he named the place Mah Mahanaim, double camp. So the footnote here is on double camps. And it says, Jacob may have been referring to the angels as another camp along with his own and viewing their presence as evidence of divine protection. 
This was Jacob's second encounter with the angels of God. And it gives the reference, um, chapter 28, verse 12. Second footnote, verse 24. 24, this is the section where Jacob wrestles. So Jacob was left alone and a man, capital M, here's the footnote on man, came and wrestled with him until daybreak. And the footnote tells us this was God himself as Jacob eventually realizes in Genesis 32, verse 30. See also verse 29 and then Hosea chapter 12, verse 4 in the form of an angel. So this was God himself in the form of an angel is what it's telling us. Okay, verse 28. And he said, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel. The footnote here is on Israel. For you have struggled with God and with man and have prevailed. And so the footnote says, he who strives with God or God strives. Amen and amen. So that's the end of the footnotes. So what do I have in my notes this morning? Okay, my notes start right out at verse number one. Then as Jacob went on his way, the angels of God met him to reassure and protect him. And I just made a note of um, Psalm 91 verse 11. Let me just pull that up. Psalm 91, 11, for he will command his angels in regard to you to protect and defend and guard you in all your ways of obedience and service. All right, so that's what this is basically telling him us here, that these angels of God went out to meet Jacob to reassure, reassure and to protect him. So my notes just basically say that we know that God has a whole host of angels that are available that can be dispatched at any time, given charge over us, that they are there to protect us, right? And so as, as verse 91 says, I mean, as Psalm 91 says, to protect and defend and guard you in all your ways of obedience and service. So let's just stop. I didn't really plan to do this, but let's just stop. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you so much for Psalm 91, Lord. We thank you that you will give your angels charge over us, Father. We thank you that in your word it says that you will command your angels in regard to us to protect us, to defend us, and to guard us in all our ways. So, Lord, we thank you for the hedge of protection that is around our lives. And, Father, we thank you for your angels who excel in strength. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen and amen. Okay, here we go. So next I have here, now look at how, how wealthy Jacob is, right? He's got oxen, donkeys, flocks, servants, male servants, female servants. So, you know, again, this is so in character with Jacob's nature, right? He's very um, scheming. He's into a lot of trickery. And so now he wants to go back to his homeland and he sends his messengers out ahead of him to um, his brother Esau. So now he gives them ex explicit instructions on what it is that they are supposed to say. He tells them exactly what they're gonna say. And he says, this is what you wanna say to my Lord. Um, Esau, your servant Jacob says this, that I've been living temporarily with Laban and have stayed there until now I've got, he, so he's got all of these um, animals, oxen, donkeys, flocks, servants, female servants. And I have sent this message to tell my Lord so that I may find grace and kindness in your sight. So he's already trying to set the stage. He's trying to make amends so that he can have peace with his brother, right? All right. So here we go, verse six. Now the messengers come back and they say, we went to your brother Esau and now he's coming to meet you and there are 400 men with him. So Esau, what's in Esau's mind that he's coming with a whole army of men, right? So now Jacob hears this and it says, he's greatly afraid and distressed. So now he comes up with the, it's actually this clever idea that he's going to split his um, people and animals into these two camps so that if one gets attacked, at least the other one gets away. Clever, 
right? Right thing to do, right strategy, very strategic. That's what I'll say. Jacob is very strategic in everything that he's doing here. He has given forethought to what it is and how he's going to carry this out. All right. So now Jacob says, Oh God of my father Abraham and God of my father Isaac, the Lord who has said to me, return to your country and to your people and I will make you prosper. So he's reminding God of what he said, right? I'm unworthy of all your loving kindness. So now he's, he's humble before God. I'm unworthy of all your loving kindness and compassion and of all the faithfulness which you have shown to your servant. Very humble here. With only my staff long ago, I crossed over this Jordan. Now I have become blessed. He's become blessed, right? He's greatly increased into these two groups of people. Now he's asking for mercy. Save me, please, from the hand of my brother and from the hand of from the hand of Esau, for I fear him that he will come and attack me and the mothers with the children. And you, Lord, said, again, he's putting God in remembrance of the word that he'd spoken to him. I will certainly make you prosper and make your descendants as numerous as the sand of the sea, which is too great to be counted. Again, very strategic. And I will say at least he had enough sense to be humble before God and say that he is unworthy of all that he has received because his life right now is what we have seen from him. He's very, um, he's a trickster, right? He lies to the father. He, they scheme him and the mother. He's going back and forth. Him and Laban are two of a kind. So they're tricking one another. Not very upright. But at least now he is humble. He's got a humble spirit. So he's asking God for mercy. Please save me from the hand of my brother Esau for I fear him that he will come attack me. Right, because the last he knew that Esau wanted to get him back for tricking him, tricking the father and stealing the birthright, right? The birthright, which he had already sold for the bowl of soup, right? Okay. But the Lord has promised him that he's going to make him prosper, that his descendants would be as numerous as the sea, too great to be counted. So he has this word from this Lord, from the Lord, a promise from the Lord that he can hold on to. All right. So Jacob, it says, then he, verse 13, then he selected a present for his brother Esau from the livestock he had acquired. And he, it goes on to list all of these 200 female goats, 20 male goats, etc. He puts them into the care of his servants, every herd by itself, and said to his servants, go on ahead of me. So he sends the servants out before him now. And he says, he puts a space between the individuals, right? The groups. Then he commands the one in front saying, tell Esau that you belong to me and you know that these animals or a gift from my brother. So I wrote in my notes again, he's really trying to buy his brother's forgiveness, whether it's really um, sincere or not. I'm not really sure. I wrote down, it could be a whole bit of, a little bit of manipulation, right? He's manipulating his emotions. He's buttering him up. He's softening him by trying to give him all of these gifts to make amends so that they can dwell in peace. And I just wrote in my notes that we see this all the time. Right. Somebody will wrong someone else. And then what happens? They try to make amends. A lot of times we hear this in um, stories with ce celebrities and they're cheating and they get caught. And now what happens? They buy their spouses these elaborate gifts worth thousands and thousands or millions of dollars. You get the new house, the car, the new ring, whatever. Right. As trying to make up for your wrongdoing. So we see here that Jacob is pretty much doing the same thing. He's going to try now to give his brother all of these gifts. And he says maybe that he'll accept them. Right? All right. So now the second group goes on and he says, Jacob says, I will try to appease him with the gift that is going ahead of me. This is where I really start to question whether this is 100% sincere or really this is just a, a strategy and a tactic so that Esau will not kill him so that he can, you know, make peace between the two of them. Then afterwards, I will see him. Perhaps he will accept and forgive me. So the gift of the herd, the herds of livestock went on ahead of him and he himself spent the night back at the camp. All right, so now he gets up the same night. He takes his two wives, his female servants, his 11 children, and he waited over this brook. He sends them across the brook. 
and he also sent across whatever else he has. So he stays back alone. And now he encounters God in the form of an angel and they wrestle. And so he touched, when the man saw that he had not prevailed against Jacob, he touches his hip and Jacob's hip was dislocated as he wrestled with him. Then he said, let me go for day is breaking. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you declare a blessing on me. So he asked him, what's your name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, your name shall no longer be Jacob, but Israel, for you have struggled with God and with men and, and have prevailed. He continues to ask God his name, but God does. But uh, God says, why are you asking me my name? And then we go down here, we're in verse 29. Now he declares a blessing of the covenant promise on Jacob there. So Jacob names this place Peniel, the face of God, saying, I have seen the face of God, yet my life has not been snatched away. All right, so what else did I write in my notes? Nothing else, just that um, I find it very common, you know, the way people conduct themselves today. And it can we just continue to say, see the same nature within Jacob, that he's strategic, that... Um, he can be manipulative, right? I think he's kind of trying to manipulate Esau's emotions by his affection, by his forgiveness, soften him up so that he can return and dwell in the land. Not 100% sure as we read this, you know, is he really sincere or he just doesn't want to die, right? Is it still the old nature of Jacob or has Jacob over the course of this time, has he really matured in his relationship with God and matured to become a different person? So those are my thoughts on this um, chapter this morning. All right, so you all have a wonderful day. Grace and peace. May miracle signs, wonder wonders and favor show up in your day today. I pray that today will be well with you. I pray that everything will go easily. May you have the divine advantage today. Um, and I just pray that today will be a, a great day and that it'll be a great week for us as we're starting out the new week. It's February 5th. All right. So for those of you that are watching on YouTube at the end of the video, if you look over this shoulder, you'll see my profile picture. I ask that you click on that and subscribe to the channel. And if you look over this shoulder at the end of the video, you'll see a video card and I will attach the next chapter um, in the book of Genesis for you. All right. So thank you so much, family. I pray, really do pray that everyone has a wonderful day. I pray that today will be peaceful for you, successful, smooth. I pray, you know what? I really pray this week that we will begin to see some answers to our prayers. If we haven't seen favor, show up because we spent the month of December praying for favor. I pray that favor shows up today. Let me just tell you this. While I'm here, there's a restaurant that I was on my last trip here. My mother and I went to this restaurant and I told the chefs that I would be back in January. And so my mother and I went to the restaurant the other day and this chef makes these special sauces all of these different flavor sauces and I had one called strawberry madness the last time I was there and so I told the chef when I come back in town I'm coming to the restaurant and I would like you to prepare a dish for me in this strawberry madness sauce well I'm gonna put this under the category of favor that's why I'm telling you the story so my mother and I go to the restaurant <coughs> excuse me the other night and the host of the fate of the at the restaurant comes out and he brings me this big jug about this big of what the strawberry madness sauce so that I can bring it back home with me. And I just thought that was so awesome that he blessed me not with just, you know, a little bit to take home. He gave me this big jug so that I could enjoy it and you know bring it back to uh, New York with me so I'm going to put that under the category of favor and that was such a great blessing I really do appreciate it so this week I say all of that to say this week may you have unexpected blessings show up may you have checks in the mail unexpected and may we just have be met with kindness grace favor and um mercy, I guess I'll say everywhere we go this week. All right, family, love you so much. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. We'll be back tomorrow. Let me tell you the title of our chapter.
tomorrow. Jacob meets Esau. So we'll have to see what this um, reunion is like. All right, everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you so much for joining me. See you tomorrow morning. Bye.